Welcome to a new edition of CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus. Happy to see you this Thursday. There's some news expected out of Washington, D.C. It concerns the Mueller report, the special investigation by former FBI director Robert Mueller. It looked into alleged Russian interference with the U.S. presidential election of 2016. The Justice Department already released a summary of the report to Congress. That happened last month. It said the investigation did not find that the campaign of Donald Trump illegally conspired or coordinated with Russia. The Mueller report didn't draw a conclusion about whether President Trump obstructed justice if he illegally interfered with government work. But the summary said the U.S. Attorney General and Deputy Attorney General both concluded that there wasn't sufficient evidence that the president had done anything wrong. So what's happening today? Well, Democrats said the four-page summary wasn't enough. They wanted to see the entire Mueller report of more than 300 pages. That's expected to be released today, though it's also expected to be redacted, meaning parts of it will likely be edited or removed first. CNN 10 is planning to follow up on this story next week. 10 second trivia. Which of these countries won its independence from Spain in 1811? Brazil, Haiti, Venezuela, or Jamaica? Only one of these countries that won its independence from Spain is Venezuela. Venezuela's leader is starting to let humanitarian aid into the country. For years, President Nicolas Maduro has denied that there's a crisis in Venezuela. But this week, his government allowed the Red Cross to make its first delivery there. The United Nations estimates that more than 20% of Venezuelans are in desperate need of supplies like medicine. With its economy in shambles, a CNN investigation just found that illegal drug trafficking through Venezuela is soaring. The country accuses the U.S. and Colombia of trying to distract attention toward Venezuela to hide their own defeat in the war on drugs. But Nick Peyton Walsh found firsthand how Venezuela is becoming a major courier of cocaine. Below is a cocaine superhighway, enriching Venezuela's corrupt elite and bringing coke to American streets. These thin lines are secret pathways from Colombia's cocaine farming heartlands below across into neighboring Venezuela. From there, billions of dollars of the drug are smuggled north in tiny planes, US and regional officials have told CNN, aided by Venezuela's army and elite. The Colombian military we're with don't get any lower to stay out of the range of traffic and machine guns and talk to locals mostly through the leaflets they drop. We've stopped drug flights out of Colombia, he tells me, but not from places we don't control. He means Venezuela, just five miles away. Below, they think they've spotted a cocaine laboratory, one of many fueling Venezuela's role as a cocaine courier, which a CNN investigation has learned is booming just as the country collapses. 240 tons went from Colombia to Venezuela in 2018, up a third in one year, a U.S. official told us, which could fetch $40 billion on U.S. streets. That traffic happening down below, one possible reason, it's alleged, why so many in the Venezuelan army and government are reluctant to give up on Nicolas Maduro. They're simply making too much money. The trade remains mostly secret inside Venezuela, on the other side of the border here. But we were able to learn more about these illegal routes in from recent defectors from the Venezuelan Army Border the Patrol the and about how their mm -hmm. officers ordered them to let cross specific trucks carrying cocaine. For five years, this sergeant got those orders often three times a week. The cars that crossed both weapons and drugs were pickups, and we would be told the color and make of the truck and when usually just after dawn or dusk. Everything was coordinated by the brigade commander. He'd send a lieutenant to tell you what needed to cross, and this was arranged high up above. Those who didn't agree were swapped out, automatically. He fled to here, Colombia, when the pressure to comply got too much, and his unit found themselves confined to base. We were locked on the base. The general would say, everyone must be with us. Leave or speak against the government, you'll get arrested. They had us brainwashed with food handouts. One night, I couldn't take it anymore. I went home and told my wife, we leave for Colombia. My son started crying and said, Dad, what are we going to do? But I knew if they stayed without me, they'd be captured or interrogated. 
Ahora les comentamos que el municipio de Venezuelan State TV occasionally shows how their armed forces crack down on the trade here intercepting Mexican pilots. They have previously rejected allegations they're actually running the drugs and did not respond to several requests for comment. But a U.S. official has told CNN these flights are surging. They used to take off from the remote hidden runways in the southern Venezuelan jungle. But in the last three years have moved north, a U.S. official told CNN, to reduce flying time. They used to be three a week, but last year they were almost daily. This year, they've seen as many as eight in a single day, a regional official said, using 50 hidden runways. CNN has seen a confidential US radar map approximated here that shows the sharp turn left the planes from Venezuela take before landing on the remote Central American coastline off of Honduras before the cocaine travels north through Mexico to the United States. Honduras is where we pick up the trail of this booming traffic again on the coastline below, turned into a surreal graveyard of narco planes. The cocaine cargo they carry is worth so many millions, the plane itself is just a fraction in a billion dollar deal. So many are discarded like used plastic bottles all over the jungle. Or crammed here into one river bend. The troops we're with don't want to be on camera for their safety. Some of these have their markings torn off to make the job of working exactly where they came from even harder. America's drug habit is where the money, the rot, all begins. But that same open market also supplies a key part of the logistics here. Well, the fires deprived most of this plane of kind of distinguishing characteristics, but you can still see N4 there, N meaning this plane originated in the United States. Brokers, a US official tells me, buy up dozens of old planes at auction in the United States and hide their ownership in shell companies to send them south to start their cocaine journey north from Venezuela. Again, uh, another N, which means another plane that started it's days in the United States. It's not just traffickers in Venezuela and the US making billions. The entire region is in on it. This is surely Honduras's biggest industry, the billions at stake everywhere. From this jungle road, which is actually a hidden runway, up to the Honduran president's brother, indicted last year on trafficking charges, which he denies. You can't stop the planes being sold or taking off, one officer tells me. So they instead just have to try and make landing harder by blowing holes in the runways. Just even slowing down this multi-billion dollar trade requires so many more holes to be blown in this vast expanse of jungle. The amount of money cocaine brings here literally dwarfs any effort to fight it. Insane amounts of cash into some villages along this coastline that have none. In fact, the Honduran army tells us traffickers flying towards these villages often kick their cargo overboard when they think they're about to be intercepted. Each 30 kilogram bundle of cocaine is attached to floats and then drifts ashore. They then pay these communities of fishermen $150,000 for each recovered bundle. It's a calculus for corruption that most officials I spoke to admit beggars belief and that no police or aid operation can really hope to challenge. One that sees the collapsing Maduro government as the alleged couriers cashing in fast in a region of desperate delivery men. First, this will look like your run-of-the-mill pontoon boat hanging out on a lake. Nothing really unusual here until we zoom out. And now you see the problem. There was no one aboard the boat. No lives were threatened here. Officials believe that recent severe storms in the area caused the boat to break loose and drift to the edge of a dam. Once the weather calmed down, wildlife officers used an electric winch to pull the boat back to shore. All hands on deck to stop a shipwreck, to keep the boat afloat, attack to stay intact. From bow to stern and from port to starboard, it's still seaworthy of being safely harbored. It was on the edge, hanging out in it deep, one waterfall away from being Poseidon's heap, but thanks to some maritime magic in a pinch, she sails again, tugged away by a winch. I'm your anchor, Carl Azuz, taking a bow for CNN.